join us this morning to dig deeper into Webby, uh, continuing series in the Webby for Me uh, LinkedIn group. So how to quickly build a Webby report with shared elements. That's going to be the topic. And today we have, let's see. We have been, uh, we've got our special guest, Pascal Golin. He's our web intelligence product expert at SAP. And uh, Gregory has deemed that uh, Pascal's immense knowledge on the subject is good enough to get us through. Uh, so it'll just be myself, Nathan Crook, senior director here with 360 Suite, and Pascal taking you in uh, deep on the topic of something that, uh, you know, frankly, we did the French. Uh, version of this webinar earlier today, and it seems that there is a lot of interest and a lot of intrigue on the topic. Um, one of the questions, actually, this came from earlier uh, presentations that we've done with Gregory and Pascal. So without further ado, let's keep moving. Of course, uh, if this is your first time joining us, there's a little panel on the right hand side of your screen it's got an orange arrow you can push it back and forth uh, depending on whether you want to see full screen or um, have the the information available to you there is a questions section uh, please ask as many questions as you possibly can we want you to get the most amount of value out of this session and we uh, we'll take the time to go through and answer as many of those as we can as we get to the end of this or even you know, via text uh, as we go along. Uh, and of course, if there's anything left over, we'll follow up with you personally to, to get that information. Additionally, the recording is, as you heard, going on. So this will be sent uh, to everyone who registered and of course, all those that attended uh, to make sure that for posterity's sake, you've got the ability to come back to this or, or dig into it for the first time. And then finally, there's a, comp a survey at the end to help us continue to get better, uh, as I'm sure you do at your work. Um, you know, the idea is to continually do better, get better. Uh, so help us make sure that we're serving you um, well. And in terms of comments, um, you know, if, uh, if you've got uh, some criticism or something that you think we can improve on, give us ideas. Help us understand what we can do to, um, to you know, help alleviate or address what you're, uh, what you're just talking about. Um, there's audio uh, in, the, uh, in that same GoToWebinar control panel. Uh, you can use your computer audio. You don't have to dial in, but you're welcome to do either if you need to. And ultimately, that is going to be um, how we interact with uh, Pascal. So Pascal, welcome. Thank you for joining us this morning. Welcome everybody. Um, so I'm going to show my screen now. Um, okay. Can you? Well, I'm going to make you the presenter now. Yes, Just please. Pop up. That's yeah. That's what I was missing. There we go. I can see you. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Nathan. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, okay, so during this webinar, I'm going to present you the uh, feature which was introduced in Web Intelligence in the 402 and which is called uh, the uh, shared elements. Um, So just a quick overview of uh, web intelligence uh, before we start. Uh, web intelligence is essentially a reporting and uh, analysis data analysis uh, tool, which has been on the market for about uh, 20 years. It's actually the, uh, the, the most used tool for uh, that purpose uh, on the market uh, today and uh, allows to the end users, any user in, a, in your company to to, to build their own uh, query to re on the on the enterprise uh, data to analyze this uh, data, then format the data into a report or uh, in a as a, in a dashboard. Then share this information with the colleagues, interact with this uh, uh, the data and uh, comment the data uh, together with colleagues, modify the content, and then again. Uh, 
put this modification into the report in a sort of a, um, a circular uh, pattern from out, going from authoring to uh, viewing the, the content of the data. The use of the uh, tool is pretty easy. Um, it's fully a graphical interface uh, with many um, uh, interactivity possibilities. It's in terms of functionality, it's a complex tool. It's got many things you can do with it, but uh, we, we try to make it as simple as possible to, to use for everyone in a company to be able to use that, that tool, whether to, uh, to build some complex uh, dashboards or just um, consult uh, current data or reports on the activity of the uh, company. In terms of key capabilities, uh, we, we've got what we call the ad hoc query. Uh, it's a very uh, simple way to, to build a query on any, any kind of data source, whether um, traditional SAP data source such as a BW or HANA or any kind of other um, um, data source from, uh, from uh, competitors. Uh, we can, you can even use some local files as a data source to build your a report or your dashboard. Really, it's, uh, it's really uh, very open. Uh, in, that, in that case, report design. Um, so it's the web intelligence comes with a built-in uh, graphics charts and tables, so the which can be dragged and dropped into the uh, into the main uh, window of the tool where you build your report or the, your dashboard. Then you can format those elements very easily in uh, in many different ways. Uh, then uh, the uh, the tool proposes several uh, several functionalities to analyze this data, uh, such as the uh, sorting, filtering the data, ranking that data, uh, segmenting the, the, this data with breaks or sections. Um, um, to use some conditional formattings on, on that data and uh, some interactivity through uh, input controls or element links, uh, which allows you to really uh, play with the data and, uh, and answer the, the business question you can ask regarding the, uh, the, uh, this data. Uh, finally, once the uh, document is uh, fully uh, designed, whether a report or a dashboard, then the, it can be uh, easily shared with um, uh, with other colleagues in the company. Um, can be published. Uh, it can be also scheduled uh, at, the, at the at a different period and executed with that to be refreshed uh, according to a schedule that you define and then publish in different ways. Uh, PDF or a web intelligence document or uh, or the means to um, uh, through email or through a shared uh, folder uh, as, you, as, you, as you want. Um, then the documents in WebE can be, can be viewed in uh, many formats. They can, can be used viewed in a PC, of course, uh, which is the uh, tool of choice to use WebE, but also on a, on a tablet or even on mobile phone with, a, with the SAP Mobile BI application, we can view the content of uh, WebE content. Finally, uh, for, for those of you who want to do a bit of uh, programming and uh, embed the uh, WebB functionalities into a portal or some other uh, third-party applications, then uh, we provide a public API, REST API, um, which is uh, very complete today with uh, some guides and, uh, and examples of uh, how to do things and uh, how to build uh, WebB functionalities into a third-party application. So now, uh, regarding the, uh, the, uh, the shared elements, uh, what, it is, what is this functionality we introduce in uh, 4.2? Basically, shared elements are report elements, uh, that is uh, tables or forms or cells or charts, which are individually saved into the CMS repository uh, together with their uh, definition, their properties, and, uh, and their queries. So how it works exactly? Hey, Pascal, that begs the question actually. Uh, I'm curious of the people attending, is anyone using shared elements? Are you aware of this feature? Are, are, you, uh, are, you, are you building this into what you're doing right now? Of course, the, it's a simple yes, no right now 
in terms of the answer to this, but if you if you've got some you know context to the way you're using or how you're using, I'd love to see that in the questions area. Uh, just be interested to see how people came about this. I know this has been a big question in a lot of our other presentations, so um, curious to see what we get to here. We got about 74% engagement right now. It's continuing to go up. Awesome. Just um, it always plays better when when everybody when everybody gets involved. It makes the numbers more interesting, more compelling. So coming up to 50 seconds, we're still slowly getting a few people coming in. And I'm going to go ahead and close us off here right now and share the results. So this um, is a lot more evenly split than I thought. What do you, what do you Pascal, is this kind of, kind of representative of what you've seen? Yes, exactly. Um, usually when we talk about shared elements with our customers, uh, about half of them know the feature and half of them don't. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. All right. Um, I'm going to hide that one. And then the other aspect that we're curious to put context around the rest of this presentation is, do you understand the capabilities it offers? Now, we went, went through a small definition there um, just as we were getting to the polls, but do um, do you get what the uh, the goal here is around shared elements? And we've got people come in. And you're right, Greg. I was verbally asking different question than the text. It, it was around that. You're right, totally right. <clears throat> yes, are you aware versus do is it used? Totally different, but you know what? Uh, that's going to be, I might have conflated two polls, so we'll definitely get there. Thank you for bringing that. Um, all right, I think we've kind of topped off on this one as well. I'm gonna close this poll, share the results. So do you understand the capabilities? 40 to 60%. That's interesting. Okay. So I'm curious what the people who say yes are hoping to get out of the presentation. If you say yes, you understand the capabilities, what are you hoping to get from this? Um, and also, you know, of course, no, that's that's why we're here today. Definitely we want to expound on that and help you share, help you understand. So I'm gonna hide these and keep us going, uh, Pascal, but um thanks everybody for for engaging. Okay, thank you, Nathan. So, yeah, just um, keep going on that uh, presentation. Um, so shared elements are report elements. So uh, as I said, they can be charts, they can be tables, they can be uh, free cells uh, that you save on the C CMS individually. So they can come from different, uh, they come usually from uh, webby documents. Right, so they can come from different Webby documents and you save them on the CMS like any other object. So you choose the folder where you want to save them and then and then they stand there as a CMS object. Then in a target Webby document, then you, you go to this CMS folder and then pick the uh, elements you want to uh, include and uh, on your, in your document. And those uh, elements can come from a different source uh, Webby document. Documents. So you can mix elements coming from different uh, source web documents. And the, uh, the the benefit of that is that the, if you have a complicated charts uh, with a complex formattings or you spend time on that to make it perfect and uh, and you want to share that chart with your colleagues then it's 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 the easiest way to do that you just share that chart on the CMS in the folder where your colleagues have access to and, and then those colleagues will be able to just uh, import that chart into their web documents and then get all the work you've done on that chart in their document same with the table imagine you have a complex uh, 
uh, a set of complex variables that you spend time to uh, make sure they were working perfectly then you just put those variables into a, into a table you share that table as a shared element on the CMS and then your colleagues will have access to those variables as well in their documents okay so how does that work exactly well in the source document Imagine here you've built that chart, you are, you're proud of, and uh, it took time for you to, to build it and then to make sure it was looking exactly as you want it to, to look. Then uh, in that source document, you pick up that chart, select that chart, then go to the uh, linking um, contextual menu, and then you save it as a shared element. Then in the CMS, you choose where you want to save that, that, uh, that chart. On the on the other at the other end of the chain, when you want to insert a shared element in a document, you have in Web Intelligence since 4.2 this shared element panel, or you have in the contextual menu menu the uh, the uh, menu entry to insert a, a shared element. So whether you go through the panel or through the contextual menu, you select the folder. Uh, where you know there's this uh, shared element, you pick up that shared element and then dra drag and drop it into your uh, document to get uh, the same chart in your uh, in your document. One thing which is important to understand is that shared elements are copies of the uh, element which is stored in the CMS repository. And this is important and I will explain you later on. There are copies of the element uh, stored on the CMS repo repository, but they also keep a link with the element which is stored in the CMS. And that is also, that is also an important point I will explain later on. So what gets imported exactly when you, you import a shared element into your document, you get obviously the element, whether a chart, a table, a free cell, and all its formatting properties. You also get all the objects which have been assigned to the uh, report element. So that includes the uh, variables and their definitions, the metadata attached to these objects. So for instance, if you build a geomap and you have geocoded the data to, uh, to show on that geomap, then you'll get all the uh, geocoding information with the shared elements. So you won't have to redo that geocoding into the uh, target document. You also get, of course, the queries to get the report element data. So that's also very interesting if you have complex queries with filters and everything. So you get that exact same queries into the uh, target document. Uh, we built in into a way, be a way to uh, combine those queries in case you include uh, import several uh, shared elements from different uh, using different uh, queries. If we find out that the queries, the data source are identical, the objects are identical, and the filters on those objects are identical, then we combine those queries into a single word to make things simpler into the target document. What does not get imported? The actual data. The data is not saved with the uh, shared element. It's only the queries which are saved. And what happens when you import the uh, shared element into the target document is that the query is silently executed in the background to get the data with the uh, uh, according to those queries. This is important for security uh, uh, purpose. Uh, if uh, the uh, the user who imports that shared element doesn't have access to the data source or the uh, connection uh, uh, used by these uh, queries, then uh, they won't get it in any data in in their in the shared element and will stay empty. What doesn't get imported either are the comments attached to the uh, shared element. Uh, because comments are not actually saved uh, with the document, they're saved in, into uh, a, another repository and they're attached to an element into a, dec a document or sometimes to a cell within an element uh, in a document. What doesn't get imported either are the input controls we can could uh, be applied onto the uh, shared element in the, in the source uh, document. <laughs> And current limitations are that shared elements are not so supported with SAP HANA online 
uh, simply because in Anla, in Anla, Anla online mode, we we uh, we don't uh, actually uh, import all the elements or the objects into the document. The query queries are ex executed on the fly when you browse the uh, Anna um, the Anna views, and, and so it cannot work with a shared element. They are not stored with the elements in the document. So once you imported the uh, the uh, shared element into uh, your document, uh, what can you do with that shared element? So imagine you want to update the shared element stored in the CMS so that every document using that shared element will get the uh, the updated information of the updated format. So imagine you, you want to change the colors in a chart or uh, change the format of a chart or the data assigned to the, that chart and you want everyone to benefit from this update. And you, the only thing you need to do is uh, store the shared elements stored in the CMS and the next time that the, the people do, the, that the uh, documents using that shared element or uh, consuming that shared element will be open then they will be the users will be notified about the update available on the CMS and will have the ability to update that shared element. I'm going to show you that in a minute. Synchronize the shared elements so that's what I was saying when you open a document uh, you have this option uh, document options where when opening the uh, document there's an automatically check which is done on all the shared elements which are included in the document to, to see if there's any update available. On top of that there's another option which can uh, automatically update those shared elements. If you don't choose to uh, make it automatic you can go into the uh, a shared element panel and then where you see this uh, automatic update, this update icon, you can decide to manually uh, update the shared elements you, you want into your uh, document. And synchronize the shared element. Once you have imported the shared element into your document, you can decide to uh, cut the link of this uh, shared of this element to uh, the the, uh, the element which is stored on the CMS. Why would you want to do that? Simply because you want to modify that element once it's in, in, it's in, in your document, or maybe what you the only thing you're interested in is the query, or maybe the complex variables which are used to uh, feed that element, and you're not interested into the shared element itself. So in that case, you just Unlink the shared element, which means you keep the copy uh, into your document because remember this is a copy of the element stored in the CMS, and you also keep all the uh, the query, the formatting, and the uh, the variables which have been used to uh, to build that shared element, and then you can do whatever you want with them into your documents. It's just like you have built those yourselves. Then finally, you can manage your shared elements stored in the CMS. You can do that through the uh, BI Launchpad, uh, or you can do that in Webby itself in the in the shared element panel. So the, since they are just objects stored in the in the CMS, you can uh, rename them. You can you can. Uh, add some description to a shared element or some keywords. You can uh, copy, paste them into some uh, new uh, folder, uh, duplicate them or just remove them entirely as you wish. Um, shared element can, can also be assigned to uh, categories which uh, can make them easier to find uh, sometimes for, for your users. Security. Security is very important for the shared element. You don't want to share anything with anybody for sure. Uh, so first of all, the shared element feature can be entirely dis disabled in uh, in the web intelligence client interface. Like many other features, uh, it's customizable. So administrator can decide to hide the feature into the uh, web intelligence client. Um, so it's important to know that users need a specific access right to be able to publish publish a shared element onto the CMS or to insert a shared element into their document. Without, the, without those rights, then user can't do anything with a shared element. Uh, finally, they need access to the connection and the universe which are consumed by the shared element because the query is executed in the background when you insert that shared element into your document. And if you don't have the right access for that, then uh, you won't get any data in the shared element. 
And of course, you need uh, access to the folder where the shared element is stored, otherwise you won't be able to get that shared element and import it into your document. What happens if you cannot access a shared element stored in a CMS, whether you're offline or the access has been denied or the shared element has been simply deleted? Well, because it's a copy in the uh, in the target document, you can still view, edit, or uh, use, consume that shared element in, in the document. But you can no longer manage it, update it, or synchronize its content with the shared element which is stored on the CMS. Okay, so that's 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 why it's important to to have the shared element as a copy, uh, really, in the target document. Okay, and have this link to the one which is uh, uh, stored uh, on the CMS. So I did a quick overview of the features uh, and the uh, different uh, possibilities and uh, um, and capabilities it uh, it has. It comes with. Now I'm going to do a demo. Uh, so on my machine to show you how it works uh, exactly. So I have here um, 4 dots sp 7 machine. Okay, I'm just going to connect to that machine and show you a few examples. Uh, so just go to the, um, the folder where I put this uh, demo. All right, here. So just to show you here, I've developed, developed a number of uh, several uh, shared elements. Okay, just going to remove that one. I will create it again. Okay, so as you can see, shared elements are just uh, objects on the CMS that I can manage like like my uh, my WB documents basically. So if I right click on the on the shared element stored in, in the CMS. I have here the properties where I can change uh, the name and the uh, description of that uh, of that element. If the server wants to give me, uh, right, okay, thank you server. Okay, so I can change the title, put some description, keywords, get some information about that shared element. I can also it some categories, uh, then I call it, copy, delete uh, the shared element um, so easily. All right, so here I also have the Webby documents I've used to create those, uh, uh, those shared elements. So typically, if I open this one, Okay, that's a Webby document where I build two charts which are not available as a standard chart in the, in the Webby graphic library. So we have here a Pareto chart based on a revenue by uh, or by a state and a butterfly chart. They are not very difficult to use, but for some users they can be uh, complicated. So I build this, this into uh, this document. All right, and the particularity with the uh, with the Pareto chart is uh, it uses a variable. It needs a variable which is not very complicated variable, but some users don't, are not uh, comfortable with uh, using variables. And anywhere, I mean, you can you could have a very complicated variable in your charts or your table, and you want to share that with your colleagues. Okay, so to share that chart as a shared element, I open the contextual menu easily linking, then save that shared element, then I choose the the folder where I want to save that shared element, so I put it there as a Pareto chart. Okay, and now if I go there, and I, okay, and it's there now as a shared element. Now, in a target document, so I have here this empty document, no data, nothing. Uh, it's really, uh, I have no data, nothing. Okay, just this uh, default cell here. And I want to insert some shared elements uh, here in my uh, document. I know that my colleagues have done those shared elements. I know where to find them. So I can go through the contextual menu here. I go there, I have the table and everything, the charts, the usual things. And I got here the shared elements. So, Share elements. Say I want to put the logo of my company here in the header of my document. I'm just going to the shared element uh, folder, right? And I have the logo here. I know that my colleague built that logo for me. So I just have to 
Okay, and that's it, it's ready. It's a very simple shared element. It doesn't have any data attached to it, just an image uh, into a free cell, but at least I don't have to do this myself and I just can just import that easily into my document. Now I want to insert some KPIs, so I can do the same thing. I know that uh, my colleagues are on some KPIs. Go there, I got the first KPI here on the revenue, just, those are really basic uh, sound example, but obviously you can do something much more complicated. Okay, so here I have my KPI, my time. I don't know if you attended the uh, previous uh, webinar on how to build a dashboard, but that's basically the same time I used to build my dashboard in that previous uh, webinar. Uh, okay, so if I go here uh, with the uh, shared element panel and I browse uh, the uh, the folders where I know I have my uh, shared elements. I can simply go there. I've got first KPI I have here. I can drag and drop the following one, then another one here. Okay. So very easy way to uh, to build my documents. You don't have to uh, to play with the uh, format uh, dialog box and uh, with the uh, that data feeding. Don't have to build any query. It's all there. Uh, it's in my document. And the queries automatically I edit here. I can I can see it here. Query. I can edit that query. Okay. I can see the queries there. Okay. With the different objects I've used. Okay. I've got the sales revenue, quantity sold, margin, dumping discount. I can remove it. Okay. Run that query, and that's it. I've got my query with the uh, different um, KPIs I've had it. I can uh, add some more complicated things, um, shared elements. So typically, just to show you, um, uh, no, I was there, I'll demo here. For instance, a geomap, I know that I have some geomap here. Okay, use a different query with different objects. So I've got my geomaps here. Okay, it's already formatted for me with the data. If I go to the uh, to the uh, dictionary, object dictionary, I can see that the query for that uh, for that shell element has been added as well, and the the data I'm using here is already geocoded. Okay, I don't have to go to edit as a geography, blah blah blah, and something which uh, which is really time. Uh, a step which is usually a very time consuming when building a geomap. It's done for me. I don't have to redo the, this in my uh, in my uh, document, target document. Carry on with um, with this uh, shared element. I now have here a shared element currently used. I have the list here, the logo, the different KPIs, the geomap, revenue by state. Okay, and I want to add uh, this uh, last one, the Pareto, I just had it. Okay, which is here, Pareto chart, just to show you the way it works with the, uh, okay, my Pareto is added, included as well. And if I look into my variables, I have the additional query for that Pareto and the variable which was uh, used to build that, uh, that Pareto chart. Okay, now uh, I can save that document. Save that document. Okay. Uh, and now imagine I go. Uh, I want to update one of the uh, shared element, typically for the geomap. Okay. And I got another version here of the uh, sales revenue by state, but with a better coloring scheme, which is. Uh, uh, based on on the uh, on the measure uh, used in the geomap, it's always better for that kind of chart. So I'm going just going to um, to save that to update the shared element into my uh, folder. All right, that's the revenue by state. Just save it here, update it here. Okay, just close that. Go back to my target document. Open that target document design mode and if I go to the shared element panel I can see that the uh, there's an update available. I 
I can see that update because in the document options I have here, the uh, it's checked by default, check for shared element of that on open. That the other uh, option uh, properties I left, I just left it um, unchecked. Okay, so if I go to the panel, I now have in the list of the shared element I use on my documents, I have the uh, GeoMap, uh, which has been updated. Okay, so I can update that one. Right, and I now get the newer version. So everyone uh, who's using that shared element in their document will get that update available right in the panel and we'll be able to update uh, their shared element to the uh, new version of that uh, shared element. Okay, so, okay, so, so that's very easily very easy to build a document all right to uh to get those shared elements and to um to really share this element with a, a large crowd of uh, users and get everyone to use the same version to get the updated version now i want to show you this uh how to unlink a shared element so imagine i uh, uh, with the uh, Pareto chart, um, I don't want to use that. Uh, I want to. I just want to keep the. I don't. I don't want to use the the chart. Say I want to use a table instead. Instead, so I want to just want to keep the variable and the different uh, values which you can see in the in that chart. So first of all, I'm going to unlink the shared elements. So I make sure it just goes away from the list here. It won't be updated anymore. Okay. Now I can just write down into uh, a vertical table, for instance. Okay, so I've got my table here with my uh, Python uh, value, which I have here. Okay, and sorted just like the uh, the uh, the chart was sorted. Okay, and, and here, so I still have the uh, just opening query. Okay. And as you can see, the query is still available here, okay, with the sales revenue, the Pareto uh, value. Say I don't want to uh, uh, to use the uh, the sales revenue, I would prefer to use the margin here, okay, and, and then the Pareto value, I want to have it on the uh, on the on the margin as well. So I'm just going to change the uh, uh, the uh, so just use margin here, okay, and okay, change it here as well. Right, okay, and then solve again. Oh, descending is better. So here, what you can see is I. I get all this information into my into all this data into my uh, target document. I get the variable. I get the uh, the query you use the here uh, for for this table through the shared element. But I don't use the shared element uh, anymore. So if, if it gets updated or removed from the repository, I won't be impacted into that document by this removal or this modification. And I can even change it here okay go into the uh to the query i've used for for that that's query one two four where i don't use the sales revenue anymore okay run queries i don't just have the margin so right so that's it you get the idea i now have all this data into my document without any effort without any any uh time um, spent uh, redoing what my colleagues have uh, already done for me uh, in other documents so it's really an easy way to share uh, complex uh, charts or complex uh, variables or queries uh, with other colleagues uh, and, and then update everyone uh, when there's a new version of that uh, element or uh, reuse them in many other documents as, uh, as you wish. Uh, just to show you the, to finish that demo, the possibilities of uh, the uh, shared element panel. So here, uh, so we got the, the list uh, of the shared element. I can, something I didn't show, but let's 
Clear views, I can copy paste the shared element, okay. I can uh, so have two copies of the same shared element into uh, the same document and I can, for instance, decide to, uh, to unlink the copy and then keep a copy uh, which uh, will be updated uh, every time there's a new version of that shared element while the other copy won't get updated. So I, ha I have two versions of, uh, of the same information or one which is slightly, slightly different than the other and uh, only one of them will be updated when there's a new version of the shared element. In the browsing uh, tab of the shared element panel, so I can browse, I uh, show you here so something we've seen already i can okay shared element got here the list of shared element and things i can do with that shared element here J just like in the bi launch by cut um, copy delete i did the properties of the shared element that's the same uh, window we had in the BI Launchpad. So I can, whatever I can do in the BI Launchpad, I can do it here from the uh, shared element panel. And I can insert that shared element here in the document or just drag and, uh, and drop it. So that's it for the demo. As you can see, it's uh, pretty easy to use, pretty easy to, to manage, although it's, uh, it's really uh, well secured. Uh, so there's no risk uh, to share uh, unwanted information with, uh, with uh, other colleagues in the, in the company. Uh, so that's it uh, for, for the demo. Uh, okay. that, was, um, that was really well put together. Let's go. I, uh, Thank you. Actually, yeah, it, it actually popped up a couple of questions and I think one that I want to, there was a, a theme to one of the questions um, that was just in general, people have had some challenges uh, around leveraging the shared elements and, you know, they were trying to really figure out, um, you know, if they're doing something wrong or if others in the community had similar issues. Uh, to me, that sounds like a question where it needs another question like well, what were the challenges or how were you trying to use it but uh, in general have you been aware of of that um, kind of uh, feedback from people and have there been any sort of standard ways that you've seen either misuse or maybe updates that have gotten that to be uh, you know less challenging for using well, uh, usually um, uh, we, we build that feature because we, we got many questions from, uh, from customers uh, um, um, wanted to share uh, complex things uh, when working together on, uh, on different documents. So uh, when someone builds a nice, uh, a nice chart, then usually in the team, everyone want to, wants to reuse that chart in their own documents or one, when someone uh, use a complex variable, define complex variables, which gives a really interesting result in, uh, in the document, then everyone wants to use the, that variable as well. And uh, we're, so we, we build that feature with that in mind. So to make, uh, to make it easy uh, in the team or uh, of people to uh, to reuse uh, things which uh, took time to uh, uh, to to put together and uh, and and to debug sometimes and to make sure they would work uh, correctly and uh, make it easy afterward to to share uh, among everyone. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, another question that's popping up and more specific this time really is around: um, Do shared elements refresh on open? Or is the data saved from a previous user that published the shared element? The um, well, the uh, with the document property, every time you open a document which uh, uh, uses a shared element, you get the uh, information whether the uh, there's one of these shared element has been updated. Okay. So you get the information and it's up to you for you to uh, either uh, get it updated automatically into the document, right? Or to manually update that shared element. Mm -hmm. uh, so you get the information, you know that the shared, there are updates available for your shared elements into your document, and uh, but you're not forced to, uh, to update them when you open the document. 
Hmm. It and maybe I mis mis uh, saw it, but it looked like there was an option to automatically refresh. Was that? Did I see yeah, that? There, yeah, there is there is a, a second option into the document where uh, automatically the shared elements into your document will get every uh, updated automatically updated every time you open the document. Right. Okay. Cool. So I, I've got another one here that's pretty um, interesting use of features. So U.S. in the U.S. state map example, in the okay. report with the copied shared element. Can mm -hmm. you apply additional or different filters in a copy report? And if you change the master copy of the shared element, will it still update the formatting in the report with the copied shared element? Yes, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, once once you uh, cop, uh, inserted the shared element uh, into your document, you can filter uh, that shared element uh, content. And if there's a, a new version of that shared element, then uh, things which get uh, updated are uh, possibly the the date, the data, the uh, the format of the shared element. Um, and if there's um, something new in the in the query, then uh, query filter for instance that would get updated as well but the local filter you put uh, and the shared element inserted in your document the report filter then that will still apply to the uh, to the copy you've inserted into your document right that makes sense um, that uh, that brings actually up a, 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 a different question but kind of along those same lines so what happens when shared elements with common dimensions are brought into a webby document can those dimensions be merged and have a common input control created for filtering <laughs> uh, that becomes complicated um, once you do you imported those shared elements into your document so you get the queries associated to those shared elements and the, with those queries the objects uh, from those queries you can do whatever you can do usually with any kind of queries they're not specific queries they're just you know additional queries in your document so uh, if the uh, the objects uh, these objects have been inserted in your document you can and, and it's possible to merge them because they have uh, common values then obviously you can uh, merge uh, those uh, those objects from coming from different shared elements so typically here i inserted a geo map with the state which was uh, geo coded right if i used a state in another shared element and that other uh, shared element did use a, a geo coded version of state then i could have merged both states to get the geocoding information uh, on, on both queries and then use it somewhere else into the document. They're just standard objects, you know, uh, mm -hmm. in, in those queries, shared element queries, nothing specific. It's just the, the only thing which is special is that in case you keep the link with the uh, shared element uh, on the CMS and then you update the query of the shared element uh, stored on the CMS, then next time you update your shared element in the, in the document, the query will get updated as well. Ah, there we go. All right, so let's keep the questions going here. So one, um, one follow-up was one, what happens if you, if a shared element gets deleted and it's used in an existing report? Okay, that, that's that's what I explained at, at the end of the presentation. Uh, since this is a copy uh, which is stored in the document, then you keep that copy, but you lose the link uh, to the shared element on, on the, to the CMS, obviously, because that shared element doesn't exist anymore in the CMS. But you don't have to worry about the copy you have in the document. That copy is still uh in the document and you can still use it format it and uh and, and change its content uh, as well one one really brief question here is security issue have you seen security be a challenge with shared elements uh no security is not a challenge but uh, since it's like 
uh, every time you share data, uh, you have to be very cautious about things uh, you're sharing. So first of all, you might be in a company where all shared element might contain some uh, a query or which bring some data you don't want to share with anybody so that's why we we we, we really took uh, precautions and uh, made sure that the security framework uh, around shared elements were uh, comprehensive and uh, easy to manage uh, through the usual uh, security features of the bi platform and uh, web intelligence definitely um Here's an interesting one. Can shared elements use different universes? Of course, yes. Uh, they don't have to be from all from the same universe or they're from the same data source, by the way. You can have a shared element uh, built on an Excel spreadsheet and then, uh, and then insert that into your document uh, together with shared element coming from uh, universe or from uh, uh, Bex query or whatever. It, it doesn't matter. The data source really doesn't matter. Nice. It will bring with it the uh, the query, the correct query with the correct data source. Very nice. So this this one is uh, is kind of unique, um, but actually I think a lot of people use business objects this way. So in a multi-tenant environment, the concern is users may have different connections, and we cannot share data across different clients. Uh, do shared elements prevent data from being shared across clients? Um, it, it all it all goes down to the uh, to the security, I guess. Um, see, if you're on um, on a client uh, or if you're a user which uh, doesn't have the uh, access right to the uh, um, to the data source or to the connection you need for that shared element, or uh, then obviously you won't get any data into that shared element. Uh, but I, I wonder, I mean, how it's going to work on the multi-tenant uh, uh, deployment where you have, I guess, several uh, CMS, and anyway, the shared element are stored uh, in a particular CMS. They are not uh, shared between uh, different CMS. So mm -hmm. you, you have access only to the shared element in the CMS where you have access to, and uh, and, and that shared element has been sold on a CMS because uh, that's from this CMS or from this server that you have access to the uh, to the connection and the, and the data source. Mm. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty fair, mm -hmm. answer, I would think, um, in scenario, right? So mm -hmm. that's one of the key features on you know leveraging business options and why you know just going forward, it's going to be difficult for people to have push away business objects in 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 terms of you know utilizing another tool out there for operational reporting for even some visualization and and that sort of thing because of the security and the uh, extensive uh use of 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 how security can be applied uh mm -hmm. in a true enterprise environment across you know many different types of people many different types of functions all those sorts of things mm -hmm. uh, yeah, here's a here's an interesting kind of take on this. So if you add a new filter on a query from a shared element and you have kept the link, will the change cause the link to be broken? And if so, will there be a warning? Um, say it again. If you have a shared element with a query and, filter. Yep, right? and you add a new a query filter um, that you and you kept the link will the change cause the link to be broken uh no it's not going to bring uh to break the link uh if you in a target document if you add your own uh query filter on top of the uh, one which is already defined uh in the shared element 
um, you're probably going, I, I never tried that, but uh, what I guess is, is going to happen is that uh, next time you uh, update the shared element, then you will, you, will, you will lose, sorry, the uh, query filter you added on the target sign because the query itself will be replaced by the one coming from the shared element, the query definition and its filters, I mean. So it won't break the link, um, but you will lose your modifications on the target side next time you, uh, you update the shell element. Mm -hmm. And does that answer your question? Um, does that help or does that initiate a follow-up? Um, you know what, um, the security piece that uh, Greg brought up earlier the, around security issue, he was actually um, talking about, uh, you know, for those who shared elements were not working, you know, do they know for sure that permissions were granted uh, to give end users the ability to leverage shared elements? Um, is that something true. that is, I'm yeah. Is that to true. understand the, uh, the question exactly. So if I'm reading this correctly, uh, and maybe, and maybe, um, I'm not, so Greg, help me if I'm not. So for, it says, I mentioned security issue. Uh, for users asking about share, shared elements not working, do you know for sure that permissions were granted? So are there any specific permissions um, other than just typical security? Uh, is there like an option that you need to, to, you know, hit to be able to use shared elements? To use shared element, there are, uh... Um, there are two permissions uh, you need to grant uh, to your users. Uh, one of them is the uh, permission to, uh, to publish a shared element uh, on the CMS. And another permission is uh, to uh, consume a shared element stored on the CMS. Okay, so those are the two sides of the uh, shared element. One yeah. permission to publish, one permission to consume. Okay, uh, on top of that, uh, the shared element, uh, as, as you've seen, they're stored in uh, the folders you, you decide uh, to use, okay? And so obviously, uh, the people who want to consume those shared elements, they need permission to, uh, to access uh, these folders. If, you don't have, if they don't have this permission, then they won't see the shared element. Okay, they won't be able, therefore, to uh, consume those shared elements. Gotcha. So, Brian, Deb, did, does that speak to maybe challenges you guys were having, or was it something different? Um, I'll be interested to see how that goes. So, follow up to the uh, multi tenant environment. So, the CMS is common. But the concern is sharing a webby document with data across clients is bad. Um, probably an understatement. But some users do so by mistake. If this was a shared element, is the data always refreshed based on the current user's rights? Um. I can see the question in the uh, in the panel. <laughs> um, I think I think that is the case, but you know I'm I'm definitely not the expert here. Share report was still seeing outdated data, so it's like it's stored. Yeah, the shared element in the shared element you have the the actual query and the query filter. Uh, Okay, and it didn't refresh the query filter to, and then the query is executed when you uh, import the, uh, when you insert the shared element into your document. Okay, uh, data range, and then, okay. Uh, Oh, I see. Okay, they use some dynamic filter based on today. Okay. All right. yeah. Okay. Well, it's it's a complicated question. I'm not sure I can answer that question here. 
I would have to really uh, dig into it and to, uh, to give an answer. For Brian's question on the um, the date range. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, about the dynamic uh, filter today and date range. Um, mm -hmm. Well, I guess the uh, the next day, uh, if the report, the data was uh, outdated, then uh, maybe the the document uh, needed to be uh, uh, refreshed. You no, know? uh, and did it work or not? Uh, if it didn't work, then that needs to be investigated. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, William wanted to just distill what we've been talking about. So basically shared elements are for the only purpose to avoid redoing um, stuff <laughs> of someone mm -hmm. else that someone else already did. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's uh, that's basically it. Uh, sometimes you spend uh, several days to uh, to build complex formulas or, or, or to really design a, a nice chart into your documents, and uh, somebody else wants to reuse the work you've done. And shared elements are uh, really the feature for that, for you to share your work with uh, with your colleagues, and uh, so they don't have to waste their time uh, redoing what you did already. <laughs> 